It's June 21st and I'm wearing a turtleneck because it's freezing. <laughs> Summer has been ridiculous and I think that's part of the reason why our garage sale did not go as planned. Here are some lessons I learned on hosting your very own garage sale. So if you want to learn more, stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark and other selling platforms. Although right now in the summer I like to call myself full-time since typically I am a high school choir teacher but in the summer I'm not teaching. So I've been doing a lot of stuff reseller related this summer including cleaning out our house and having a garage sale. I was really inspired to just like Marie Kondo my house and get stuff out that didn't need to be in here anymore and as a result we just had all of this clutter kind of laying around and so I convinced my husband <laughs> that we should have a garage sale. We've had one garage sale before and that was like four or five years ago and we actually did really well at that one and so because we had so much clutter my husband agreed to do one again this year and since I've gone to so many garage sales now especially like this summer and last summer once I got into reselling I feel like I've picked up a lot of tips as far as what people are looking for when it comes to garage sales I know what kinds of things draw me in as a potential buyer and so I thought that this was going to be amazing so I'm going to just share with you some tips that we learned from things that went really well but also things that maybe could have been a lot better. I understand that this is quite the departure from the content that I typically put out there, which is more reseller related, Poshmark related, but even as resellers, I think that sometimes we just have too much stuff, whether it's our own personal stuff in our homes, or maybe we've just picked up a lot of bad buys along the way. I actually just watched a video too where the Cincinnati picker did a garage sale as well, and it was kind of his way of moving out some bad buys from, you know, even garage sales that he'd attended in the past. So I thought that this would be kind of just an interesting perspective on garage sales being on the other side of it and holding one. So I do hope you enjoy, even though this is not necessarily Poshmark related or reselling related in the conventional sense. So let's get right into some of the things that I learned. Here's, here's a post-it again. You know how I love my post-its. So the first lesson I learned is that you need to have an adequate amount of prep time before you host your garage sale. This, I think, was mistake number one for me. I decided pretty late in the game that I wanted to have a garage sale. Like basically I made the decision and I was like, it's happening in two weeks. And we didn't really have enough time to adequately go through every room of our house and really deep clean and get stuff moved out. Even if I were to right now look through some of the rooms in our house, we'd probably still find a ton of stuff. And so what I should have done is I should have either set the date for the garage sale a little bit farther in the summer or I should have thought of it beforehand and started just planning earlier and cleaning through our house earlier with the intent of finding things to resell at our garage sale. So one thing you wanna do is make sure that you have an adequate amount of time. And I can't tell you how much time is enough time because it really will vary from person to person, from household to household. We especially had a lot of clothes, especially like baby clothes to get through. And that just took a long time for me to really sort through and organize, especially because I wanted to be pretty organized at the garage sale, which we'll, we'll talk about later in this video. But because I wanted it to be organized, I had to really go through and make sure that things were sized by, you know, like newborn and zero to three months and all that kind of stuff. So it did take a much longer time than I thought it was going to. So just make sure that you are really thinking about all of the spaces in your house that could use some decluttering and that you are able to put enough time aside to tackle each room. Now I am in my daughter's room and I'm going through all of her clothes. She has boxes and bags and more boxes of stuff that either is too small on her or stuff that's too big for her and then there's a lot of stuff too in her closet that don't fit her anymore. So I need to go through the stuff that's hanging and pull out the stuff that doesn't fit her. But I just have piles going on right now. So this is like stuff that for whatever reason never made its way into a box. This is like 12 to 18 months. My daughter is gonna be six soon. So I don't know why this is like still hanging out in her closet somewhere. Um, this I believe is for two year olds. This is three year old stuff, four year old stuff and five year old stuff. Behind me, I have a bag that I'm just putting stuff in that needs to get donated. That's stuff that probably is stained or socks or things of that nature that I don't really want to sell at the garage sale. And these are bags that I'm just going through, boxes of clothes that I'm going through that were in her closet. Um, she has like a little system on that shelf right there. Basically, 
if something is too small on her, she knows to just put it in that shelf. And that box was overflowing, so I'm finally attacking that. And then these boxes were in her closet. They have clothes in them that I believe are just too small on her. So this is gonna be quite the project, but I think that if I can get through this, this will provide a lot of inventory for our garage sale. She also has a lot of books and a lot of clothes in that dresser. There's not really anything in this dresser, but just a lot of other places that I can look in regards to finding stuff that's gonna sell and it will also help us declutter our house. I'm super excited for that. Stay tuned. One word of advice that I would give you on decluttering is do not think that you're gonna get through your whole entire house in a couple days. You will just feel so overwhelmed and will probably give up before you even start. And so one thing that I recommend is scheduling out a timeline of when you're going to tackle a specific room. So my husband and I, we decided on this day, we are going to tackle the garage and we both were in the garage that way we could ask each other too if we didn't know what something was like do you need this do we need this are we good to sell it cool and if both of you or anyone who has anything that lives in that room if all of those people could be there then it helps the room to just get cleaned out faster and you just make sure that you're not actually throwing things out that people do want in their life so personally i would suggest tackling one room a day so that you can really do a good job of it and you're able to devote as much time as you need in that room the next lesson I learned about hosting a successful garage sale is to have enough of the right equipment. In order to have a successful garage sale, you need things like tables, you need things like bags to put people's items in, you need clothing racks, you need all sorts of things. There are a lot of people who go down that route of just like throwing a tarp on the ground and throwing all their stuff on the tarp. And even for that, you need tarps, right? So there are a lot of things that you need just to even display your items properly. And a lot of those items we did not have. What we did have to work with in our own home, in our garage, we had like two of those big shelves that you use to store stuff and we had tons of crap on them but we cleared all the crap off a lot of which we realized could be sold at the garage sale and we used that as a place to display things like our plates and you know just kitchenware type stuff as well as other home good type things um, we had one folding card table and it was a piece of poop like it was so bad like people would set things on it and it would just like almost break so we did have one table but it wasn't very sturdy so I actually created a Facebook post asking people if they had tables that I could borrow and I had some people really come through and um, you know they were very generous with letting us borrow things the problem was for example one of my coworkers, he let us borrow six of his six foot long folding tables, which was a godsend. We used every inch of every single one of those tables. So that was great. The problem was the Saturday that we were gonna have our garage sale, it got rained out. So then I was just planning on having a garage sale the following Saturday. Well, then he messaged me and he said, my wife actually wants to have a garage sale this coming Thursday and Friday. Can we get those tables back? And of course I was like, yeah, so I could not hold my garage sale the next day. Those tables were not mine, and so I could only hold on to them for as long as someone was willing to let me borrow them. So that is one thing that you have to take into consideration. But definitely ask around, see if people have tables, if they have chairs, if they have racks, if they have tarps, if they have clothes racks, all of those things that you'll need to properly display your items. You may not have a lot of that stuff in your own home, so definitely start asking beforehand to see if some other people have those items because a lot of those things you'll only use for a garage sale, so do you really wanna invest the money to pay and buy them? If you, if you anticipate having a garage sale often, then maybe, but otherwise, it's best to borrow. What are we doing right now? <laughs> Why? Here's what we got going on so far. It's like 10 o'clock on Saturday. There's my brother. Got like clothes, books. Here is the next lesson I learned about garage sales. You have to have good weather. And this is something that you're just not in control over. I decided I wanted to have a garage sale last weekend, so that's what we planned on. And I wanted to do it Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday was actually pretty cold and people still came out, but it was cold, especially for it being June. Friday was pretty decent weather. So it's just me right now and it's actually kind of chilly, which is why my hood is up and why I'm wearing a hoodie. But 
Um, it's nearing the end of our garage sale for the second day, and we've been doing okay. I'm going to turn you around so you can see my husband. <laughs> but yeah, that's the check-in. Oh, and there's a little bug on my phone, so I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, bye. And then my husband kept telling me, he's like, the forecast does not look good for tomorrow. And I was like, it'll be fine. Like, I'm sure maybe it'll drizzle a little bit here and there. Like, we'll be fine. Saturday morning rolled around. And at about 8 o'clock, there was a downpour. There was thunder. There was lightning. It rained so hard for a decent amount of time. And there were like three or four people that braved the storm and they still came to the garage sale, but it, it was bad and it was so disheartening. Then it's kinda like any sign, if you can hear that, <laughs> it's rain. <laughs> Let me show you a little bit of the rain. You can see it raining on top of this thing. Can you? Or maybe you can see it on the ground. But it's, it's not wonderful garage sale weather in the least. So, today will most likely be a bus. How do you feel about that, Chi Wan? <laughs> this is a lot of Chi Wan's shoes down here that she was hoping to sell. We'll see what happens. Maybe the sun will come shining through in a minute or two. All right, adios. I had a few friends who had contributed to the garage sale and we just sat in the garage and watched it rain and it was really sad, but it's out of our control. So, you know, we just had to call it and move on with our lives. But as much as you can, especially the week of, be flexible when it comes to your weather. If I had paid more attention to the forecast, I, th I think it did say that there was like a decent possibility that it could rain and I was just like, well, maybe if I hope hard enough, like it won't rain and it still did. So just be really cautious about weather, maybe try to have a plan B, but also understand like if it rains, the chances of people coming out to your garage sale are so slim because they're going to assume that you've canceled it. The next lesson I learned is just about pricing your items and this is kind of twofold. One is you want to price things to move and I definitely think that we did a good job of that. If anything, we may have priced things way too low. Remember, you are selling things at a garage sale. You are not selling things on eBay or on Poshmark. So people do not want to pay $20 even if your dress is by whoever. Like they're expecting to get things for really cheap. My brother and his wife, they contributed things to our garage sale. And my brother did not really understand the concept of garage sale prices. He was like, why would we sell our ice box for anything less than $10? And I was like, because nobody wants to buy your cooler for $10, like they will leave and they will not buy it. I made him price like one of his rakes or something like that for a dollar and it sold. And he's like, see, I could have sold it for much more. And I was like, no, you probably would not have. So, you know, just be really thoughtful of how to price your items because the point is to get that stuff out of your house because let's be honest, if you didn't sell it at the garage sale, weren't you just gonna donate it anyway? The second thing is I bought these little price dot sticky things from staples and they were awful like they just kept falling off of all of the items so we just had like all these little sticker dots all over our garage and all over the driveway so really i mean and they were pretty expensive they were i, I think like the avery brand and i could have if i wanted to like typed out prices and stuff and printed it out from my printer like that's the kind of labels that they were but they weren't very good at actually sticking to the surfaces of the items that I was trying to sell. So just kind of brainstorm different ways to create pricing things, whether you're printing stuff out on paper and taping it, if you're selling like a lot of things for the same price. We did that for clothes, like all of our adult clothes were just a dollar an item, so we just printed out signs on paper that said that and taped them around where the clothes were. All of our children's clothes were a set price. So anything like that where it's like a set price, you wanna just maybe make a piece of paper that says it so you don't have to waste all that time like individually pricing things. But yeah, maybe just think about different types of things that you can use to put on your items with the prices because those stickers that I used were no good. Okay, so I am in the parking lot of this plaza that has a Dollar Tree right next to a Staples. And I actually came here to the Staples, but then I remember that there's Dollar Tree here and I actually got a lot of my garage sale essentials at Dollar Tree, which is amazing because everything is a dollar. The only thing that they didn't have that I'm gonna go to Staples for 
are those little pricing dots. And I also kind of want to see if they have a tagging gun. I highly doubt it, but if they do, that will make pricing my clothes or like my clothing items so much easier. So we'll find out, but they tend to have like a really nice little section with garage sale items. Um, it'd even be really cool to have like a cash box, but that's super unnecessary. So we'll see what happens, but here we go. The next lesson that I learned is that having good signs and marketing well for your garage sale are key. So in terms of signs, I actually did buy one of those like red garage sale signs from the Dollar Tree, but I realized that it's so little like the the post that you put into the ground is so short that it wasn't really gonna draw as much attention as it should. So that sign we actually just put like right in front of our mailbox so that people knew like that was our house. Other than that, I actually made signs and I had my daughter and her friend who was over for a play date every day that week, I had them like decorate it but I made sure that the the words that said garage sale were really big and I also included the times on the sign and then obviously our address as well. I made the signs out of like neon colored poster board so it wasn't just like white, it wasn't just, but it was like fluorescent green or fluorescent pink and then depending on the intersection I also had cut out arrows so that people could understand like which way they needed to turn to get to our house. Thankfully our house is on like the main road of our neighborhood, but even still like depending on which entrance to the neighborhood you come in, they may not know if they needed to turn right or left. So, you know, I made like little signs with arrows on them to show them that. And we did have one person come to our garage sale and before she left she was like, oh, by the way, like you guys had great signs. So I think that was helpful. You also wanna make sure that you're marketing well. Put your garage sale on as many different places as you can to let people know that it's happening. So obviously Craigslist, you should put it on there because not only will people check out Craigslist for local garage sales and yard sales, but it, all of the garage sales that are on Craigslist are aggregated into Yard Sale Treasure Map, which is an app that a lot of hardcore garage sailors use to figure out which garage sales they wanna hit up that particular day so you want to make sure that you're advertising even on Facebook there's like Facebook marketplace if there are any mommy websites or forums or anything like that for your local area definitely make sure that you're advertising in as many places as possible and in your descriptions for your garage sale you want to be as specific as you can about the types of items that you are going to be selling at your garage sale because it's that kind of stuff that will draw people in I had a lot of people say that they came to my garage sale because it said that I had a lot of baby clothes and that's what they were looking for my next lesson is that if you have kids, make sure that you have things for them to do. I'm gonna show some videos of it, but in the week of the garage sale, I had a lot of little tasks that I knew I needed to get done, and they were things that really like my daughter could do. My daughter's about to be six, and we also had one of her friends over at our house basically every day that week because her parents were still working before the daughter started summer school, and she just needed a place to be for a couple hours, so she would come over to our house in the morning, and then when her mom came home, our daughter would go to her house for the afternoon, and so when they they were over at our house, I had little jobs for them to do like decorating the garage sale flyers or things like we had all of these magazines that I was going to try and sell for like a quarter a piece and I had them cut out the address label on all of the magazines so that people wouldn't just have our address sitting around at their home. We have so many magazines and so I put my daughter and her friend to work and they cut out the address labels. Even though people are coming to our house for the garage sale, we just didn't want them to have our address like at their house if they do end up buying a magazine. I'm probably gonna price these at like a quarter each or something like that and hope to move some of them that way. Most of these I have not even read. I don't know why I subscribe to so many magazines. And then these are the ones that we haven't done yet. That small stack are magazines that I actually do wanna read. And the, this stack was like, Magaz you can see like Cosmo, like I didn't really want, I didn't really want them cutting the labels to that magazine. So, garage prep is going well. Now I'm gonna get a garment rack out of my car that I borrowed from school. Finding little things for kids to do is really important. On the day of the garage sale, what we had planned was for the kids to do a lemonade stand, which 
turned out really well. We also had a lot of help come over, different people from our church that they like to hang out with, and they came over and they helped with the lemonade stand. Like one of my friends came over and she made cookies with all of the kids that were there, and that kept them busy and allowed me to be outside, tending to customers and just making sure that the garage sales stayed organized, and it also kept them busy, and they were still doing something fun and, you know, making memories and all that good stuff. Well, then that's what the fate has chosen. Oh. All right, have we reached one cup of flour yet? Brown sugar team has done one cup. Oh what are you guys making? Cookies. Cookies. What are you making it for? Uh, for the stand. Whatever. For the lemonade stand. So we can have okay, money, money. Yeah, yeah, money, money, money. But I want to taste that cookie. <laughs> Just make sure that if you are having a garage sale and you have kids, that you have a plan on how you're going to keep them occupied as well. The last lesson that I will share with you in terms of having a successful garage sale is you want to have as many items as you can because people want to have a lot of things to look through and to bundle together. And if you don't have enough items from your own home, then consider asking other people if they want to bring stuff over to your house that they have to get rid of as well. This worked out really well for us. I had one, two, three, like at least three different people that brought us stuff for the garage sale. And most of them had kids and those kids also helped out with like the lemonade stand and baking cookies and all of that and it just made it more fun to be all together and to hang out with each other during the garage sale so I basically provided the real estate in terms of where they were gonna be able to sell their stuff and they just bought their stuff they priced everything themselves and it was just much more fun that way and also I got to advertise our garage sale as a multi-family garage sale which people like to hit up because again they think that there's gonna be more stuff there which there was so those are the tips that I have for you regarding having a successful garage sale. I would not necessarily call my garage sale a success, and that's because some of these lessons I had to learn the hard way, particularly that weather one. So in total, we only had our garage sale Thursday and Friday, and we made a, around $300, which is nothing to sneeze at, but it I had these like dreams of grandeur with you know i really thought that we were going to make like a thousand dollars in the at the least and my husband thought we were going to make a hundred so he was actually closer to the correct amount now had we been able to have our garage sale on saturday as well i do think that we would have done much better and also i think that some people were staying away from my neighborhood when it came to garage sales that weekend because the weekend before was our neighborhood garage sale and so a lot of people had come to our neighborhood the week before and I bet that a lot of people thought that our garage sale was just kind of leftovers from what had happened the week before when in fact we weren't able to have a garage sale during the neighborhood wide garage sale because my friend got married that Saturday morning and so it is what it is and you know I again maybe I should have been more thoughtful about the date and been more thoughtful about when we were gonna have it but it is what it is, and so I'm happy with the money that we were able to make. We do have a lot of stuff left over, so I think that we may actually try to have another garage sale maybe in like a month or so, and um, just make sure that the weather is gonna be immaculate. <laughs> so maybe there will be like a part two to this vlog, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you learned something about garage sales. I hope you've been able to go to some fantastic garage sales. Do you hear that thunder? Like the weather is still crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. If you like reseller content, if you like things like thrift hauls or vlogs or Poshmark tips, anything like that, feel free to subscribe if you've not done so. If you learned anything about garage sales today, please make sure that you hit that like button and I will see you guys later. Bye.